From that moment onwards, the blood bag cannot be traced back. It carries only the placental blood bank number, which it will retain throughout the process until it is frozen. The blood bags from which the cells are taken are stored at the blood bank of Hôpital Saint Louis. They are used to graft fetal stem cells into patients from around the world. La totalité des patients hospitalisés dans ce service. All of the patients hospitalized in this department are patients for whom the usual treatments, chemotherapy in particular, have not been sufficient to eradicate, that is, totally eliminate, the malignant cells in the bone marrow. The patient stays in hospital in a sterile room in which the air is filtered under pressure and everything that comes into contact with the patient must first be sterilized. Transplanting stem cells involves taking the graft, placing it in a bag like this, after thawing, and injecting it intravenously via this tube into the patient's bloodstream. These cells introduced into the blood display a homing phenomenon in that they migrate via small blood vessels to the bone cavities where they find the environment they need to divide and multiply. It's from these cells, known as stem cells, that the blood constituents are produced. How about taking your temperature? Temperature in the ear, you mean, like a cow? That's it. Just so I can put it in the report. Here we go, then. Just like a cow. You don't have any trouble doing it yourself, do you? No, I'm not that used to this yet, it's OK. Yes, you're the only patient who can do it himself. Really? Pretty much, yes. Why is that? Because the others are mostly children, so we have to do it for them. What about Darius? Is he a child? Yes, but he's not in a sterile room. The fruits of these labours have now made it possible to cure more than 50% of the patients. And cured means no clinical symptoms five years after transplantation. 36.3, that's fine. OK. Do you need my blood pressure? Yes, that would be good. Like that, it's all done, and I won't have to bother you again. In a different approach, more audacious solutions are being considered, using the womb of the mother as a natural sterile chamber. Scientists plan to graft stem cells from another fetus directly into the ill fetus. And this has a very low risk of rejection. This program involves in utero transplantation, where we will transplant stem cells directly into the fetus while it's still in the womb. This procedure will allow us to treat dis genetic disorders diagnosed early in gestation, before the immune system is developed, and before there is a chance to reject the tissue. Dr. Rodri Jones has taken fetal stem cells, potential candidates for transplantation, from storage at minus 196 degrees centigrade. How does he check the quantity and quality of these cells? We throw the cells out in a water bath at 37 degrees centigrade. So they are rapidly thawed, ready for use. We take the sample of cells so that we can analyze them using a special antibody which detects stem cells. The antibody is labeled with a fluorescent tag that allows us to count the stem cells in a flow cytometer. The sample is placed in the machine. And it's taken up and the analysis begins. Each time a cell goes through the machine, the laser beam excites the fluorescent label and it literally shines up as a spot of light which is detected by the equipment inside the, the flow cytometer. And we can distinguish between dead cells 
and live cells. And when we look at the live cells, we can determine which of those are actually stem cells. After the cells have been checked, they can be used for transplantation into the fetus. The procedure involves ultrasound, so we use an ultrasound machine to visualize mother's abdomen and then the fetus inside. And when we visualize the fetus, we can see the fetal abdomen, inside which is the fetal liver. We're aiming for the fetal liver. We can then take a needle and the cells are injected into the abdominal cavity. If I may draw just a simple fetus. We have the abdominal cavity, in which is the liver, where all the cells, blood-forming cells, are being produced up until around this period. After that time, cells were migrating from the liver to other sites within the body, particularly to the bone marrow and to the spleen. The stem cells we use can come from different sources. We can obtain them from bone marrow, and that would be father's bone marrow, perhaps, or even better, mother's bone marrow. We can also get them from the peripheral blood of mother or father. We can also obtain stem cells from umbilical cord blood. But the best source of stem cells for any of these procedures is the fetal liver itself. Now that would mean obtaining cells from another fetus as a result of a termination of a pregnancy. And clearly this is full of ethical problems. But what we would like to know is why these cells are so good. What is it about the fetal liver stem cells that makes them better than all these other stem cells? 35 transplantations of this type have been attempted. But Rodri Jones believes that we should wait for several years before concluding whether they have been entirely successful. Meanwhile, a different approach has also been suggested. Researchers are looking at the possibility of transforming the stem cell before its implantation. This would allow use of a technique known as gene therapy. The use of gene therapy with stem cells could one day make it possible to cure certain genetic diseases, even before they become evident, very early in the development of the fetus or child. In Duchenne muscular dystrophy, for example, all the cells, including the stem cells, carry an abnormal gene in the DNA of the X chromosome. This abnormal gene results in the gradual degeneration of the muscles in 10 to 20 years. It could, in the future, be possible to correct this defect by using the patient's own stem cells. To do that, we would need to take the normal gene and put it into a virus that has been modified to render it safe. This virus will then be allowed to penetrate the stem cells of the patient and to insert the good gene into the DNA of these cells. The resulting corrected cells, when injected into the patient, would start to produce normal muscle, and as they are stem cells, they would transmit the correction to the very large number of cells produced from them, so that the disease could, in theory, be overcome. There is still some way to go before patients can be treated by this technique. While this work progresses, other possibilities are being explored. One of these, which has been used on 200 patients around the world, is particularly exciting, although it is still associated with risks for the patient. The idea is to cure patients who cannot control their movements properly because their brains no longer produce a substance, dopamine, essential for the transmission of information between nerves. Parkinson's disease is a rather selective destruction of a certain type of nerve cell in the brain. It's only a very special kind of nerve cells, those that produce dopamine, that dies, and this takes place within a limited area of the brain. And when these dopamine cells die, it leads to the symptoms that we can see in this patient who has difficulties walking, turning, and whose hands shake. Under the 